2070 GRE is real. Switch 2 also was real for a little bit, and RTX 50 series cards, some getting below MSRP. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast this Friday, April 25th, 2025. As a reminder, in two weeks, we're gonna be drawing the winner for all of our giveaways that we currently have going on. Twitch.tv forward slash UFD tech has a 5090 PC that we're giving away. The Twitch.tv forward slash UFD music has a 7900 GRE PC with a 7800 X3D. And we're also giving away an RTX 5080, and then our UFD Music uh, YouTube live stream has a 9070 XT Sapphire Nitro Plus we're giving away. All of those end on May 9th, which is in two Fridays from now, so if you want to enter into any of those, check them out at the links in the video description. We'd love to have you over there. But while we're giving away a 7900 GRE, the 9070 GRE keeps rearing its ugly head into our that's the phrase, I, I didn't mean to call it ugly, I'm sorry, but the, the 9070 GRE popping up in a lot of details. The reports were was supposed to originally come out sometime in May, and now allegedly it's been delayed until Q4, which is a pretty long delay, but then we get box art coming out from Power Color, showing off the great Radeon edition of the Reaper, as well as the Red Devil. These cards appear to be real. They also appear to have 12 gigabytes of VRAM, which is what it was alluded to that it was gonna be. So it looks like this card will exist, it just, no clarity on price or uh, anything else release date, something like that. It looks like it's gonna have three quarters of the amount of performance as the 9070 XT. Hopefully they're stock and reasonable pricing. I know that sounds like a dream, but you don't have to dream about today's video sponsor. You can have them. As you can see, my hair is growing back nicely from my recent bald adventure, which means this is a perfect time to talk about Kitsch and their solid shampoo and conditioner bars. They're also a solid sponsor of today's video. Kitsch is the leader in beauty and wellness and have recently introduced their rice water solid shampoo and conditioner bars. Now, before you go all eat this for girls on me, listen here, Jack. Dudes have hair too, and you should be taking care of it while you still can. Our business manager, Michael, pleads with you. So drop that 37 and one that also somehow strips paint and gets Get something that actually helps your hair. Kitsch shampoo and conditioner bars are formulated with rice water to aid in both repairing damaged follicles, preventing split ends, and boosting hair density and shine. Michael here has been on his own involuntary bald adventure for a while now, so we let him use this routine for a few days. Just take a look here for the before and after. Not only does his hair look better, but it feels better too, with improved thickness and a healthier texture. Now let me tussle the hair with my fingers. Plus, his hair is being judged by his hairdresser fiance, so she knows what she's talking about. You might also be wondering, why is my shampoo in a bar? This isn't a setup for a dumb joke, but a great way to save plastic. One bar saves two bottles of its liquid counterpart. So grab yourself a shampoo and conditioner combo now with my code UFDTech to get 25% off site wide. This deal makes the bar combo less than $25. And don't worry about wherever you live because Kitsch ships in the US and internationally to over 90 countries. Trust me, your hair will thank you. Like how I'm gonna thank Kitsch for sponsoring today's video. Well, with that luscious hair that Michael now has, Kyler was itching to pull it out because Switch 2 pre-orders went live yesterday and it turns out they're kind of difficult for people to get their hands on. Kyler didn't manage to get one at all and it looks like most of them went out of stock within a couple minutes after going live at midnight. GameStop opened up at 11 a.m. Eastern and Amazon still hasn't opened up, but it does look like Switch 2 pre-orders are not such a simple thing to, for people to get their hands on. I have talked about my experience being able to pick one up, uh, but Kyler not getting one here in the U.S. and that appears to be the case not just here in America, but all over because there was a lottery system that Nintendo opened up in Japan that got 2.2 million entries and Nintendo said that they were surprised and it was way more than they were expecting. And in response to that, they have to reconfigure a few things and try to figure out how to get their production system up to snuff when it comes to getting the Switch 2 out there. Let me know if you were able to pre-order a Switch 2 if you were actually looking to do it, or maybe if you weren't looking to do it and you still did it anyways and you just happened to be on online at the right time. Let me know. I want to hear from you down below in the comments. And a lot of people let Sony know that they wanted the retro themed PlayStation 5 backgrounds to stick around. This was something that they did for the 30th anniversary, giving you access to the OG 2, 3, and 4 PlayStation themes on the PS5. But then they got rid of them because they said that it was a limited time release and that they were going to look into bringing them back. And it looks like they actually have. With them as of April 24th, getting a global rollout for people to continue 
continue to be able to use these themes. However, that is just gonna be visually. One of the things that was attached to the visual themes was also the startup sounds of each console, and those aren't coming back, which is a big bummer for a lot of people. I know Reese is probably disappointed, so uh, hopefully he's not too sad when delivering you the tech deals. Well, Reese, while you sling deals that sometimes people want to pick up, sometimes they don't, I want to sling you some information that you might care about, might not. I just want to talk about it because I think it's cool. Intel revealing the roadmap for their automotive chips, showing off what they have planned until 2027 with all of the various different architectures that they're using. And that includes up to a 32 core Grizzly Lake chip that's supposed to come out in the first half of 2027 being codenamed Monument Peak, which is just a significant increase, especially since it's gonna be past what we're currently on. So the automotive chips that they have typically end up being based on previous generations. So you see the Ash Creek Falls was based on Sky Lake, Malibu Lake was based on Raptor Lake. Frisco Lake, which will be in the future, is based on Panther Lake. And Panther Lake appears to be the chip that we're likely to get next. It doesn't look like it's based on Intel's 18A. It looks like it's being produced at TSMC, but could be the core Ultra 300 series, both on laptops as well as on desktop. So that's what we're expecting to get next. But it looks like uh, it's going to have cores, cores jammed into it. Lots of cores, lots of cores everywhere. And what hasn't been a lot everywhere has been the stock of the RTX 50 series. But turns out that thing might be changing a little bit right now. Not only is stock improving, but also prices continue to go down in various different regions across the globe. So over in Germany, it's being reported that the RTX 5070 and 5070 Ti are actually significantly below MSRP by about 10%. And it's dropped that much in the about month and a half that these cards have been out. The 5070 Ti isn't as large of a drop, only being about 35 euro that it's decreased versus MSRP. SRP. However, one of the things to point out is that exchange rates have always been taken into account when it comes to the European version of these cards. But even with the change in the Euro to the US dollar, this is actually still a pretty significant price drop to get down to 590 Euro. On the 5070, it actually shouldn't be that much if you just look at the exchange rate. And theory is people aren't buying it, so the price is coming down. Now, this isn't happening everywhere across the world, but it does seem to be a good indication. We've seen this happen. Sometimes price drops and stock availability happens in Europe and then it makes its way over here to the US. And one of the things that I've been seeing is that it's actually been fairly easy to get RTX 5090s in stock over on Newegg. Now, these are still at a very significantly high price. It's roughly $3,000 for the GPUs, but they also come in a combo with motherboards and they happen to be the Z890 motherboards from Intel, which appears to be a platform that fewer people want. So it's a little tricky, but it used to be that these combos weren't even as easily available as these are now. This combo that I'm looking at right now has been available for well over 12 hours today. So either it looks like demand is being satiated with supply or fewer people are buying the supply. So it's being satiated by the fact that people don't wanna buy these expensive graphics cards or they're tightening their purse strings because of economic uncertainties. But hopefully the, uh, the pleasant thoughts that happen here are if it's in stock and people aren't buying them, then that likely means that they might do something different with the price moving forward. We'll see. And we'll see what you guys said in yesterday's episode of Hot News. We got a couple people talking about flames when it comes to NVIDIA. NVIDIA flame gen becoming real fake frames, real flames. And then also a lot of people talking about the changes that are happening when it comes to Discord. RIP Discord 2015 to 2025. I, uh, I learned that the CEO who's now taking over Discord was apparently responsible for Candy Crush. If that helps you feel any better about what's happening to uh, Discord, that's that's a uh, who who's uh, being in charge of that. And we got Peter saying, "I'm not liking that YouTube channels are moving to putting their videos behind paywalls. Memberships. I'm already paying for YouTube Premium. Now all these channels are putting many videos behind membership paywalls. Um, okay, I I mean I I hear your input on that, but this is something that we've been doing for I don't know." the better part of over half a decade. We've been on float planes since like 2018, 2019, it was 2019. And then we were early releasing videos on Patreon a couple years before that. And it's not that 
I, at least here at UFD Tech, what we're not doing is releasing videos that are member only. They are just member first, as you can see the designation that's here on YouTube. So typically our cadence is weekdays is hot news, weekends are gonna be other videos, and sometimes our production allows us to get those other videos done ahead of time. And so we just try to, you know, have, we have it sitting there and, and uh, because of how YouTube plays out, it's bad for us to release hot news and another video on the same day. So we have to wait for the weekend, but now we have a, a, the ability to give it to members first and then have it go live. Um, and so we choose that because we stopped working with Floatplane and we, this, this is just something that we've been doing, which is the early releases that are tied to people who want to support the channel because the videos are available and it doesn't affect affect us to make them members only firstly, and then eventually they will go live. Like the gaming on Mac OS video will be going live on Saturday. So I, I hear you, but we haven't made very much content exclusive. It just happens to be a timed release. And even the same thing happens here with hot news. If we get this hot news episode done, early, say around 6 a.m. Eastern is when it's done editing, we will release it to members first because our release time is 9 a.m. Eastern. So we've been doing this for, for a very long time. I, I get if you don't appreciate it, but you still get the videos the same time that they would release anyways, right? If you don't want to become a member, there's no, you're missing out on literally nothing. And then Christopher Yemon saying, whoa, I got quoted in two recent comments. You might as well have me on the show at this point. No, but third comment, here you go. Also to your point, the old Oblivion creative director agrees with you. He thinks it has enough gameplay changes to qualify as a remake. I know. I saw that. I saw that. Listen, I, I've read everybody's arguments. I read through every single comment on uh, Hot News yesterday. I hear everybody's argument when it comes to remaster versus remake. I think we're just taking the same information and drawing different conclusions. I'm hearing everything everybody has to say to disprove what I'm saying, and I, I hear the evidence, and I think that proves what I'm saying. So we're just... Or where we're at. I was trying to think of like, why does it matter? Why does it matter? Why do I care whether it's called remaster or remake? And I think it boils down to like expectations, right? If Bethesda says that this is a remaster and they went through the effort of changing the leveling system, changing uh, combat mechanics, allowing you to run everywhere, and then also doing a graphical upgrade to Unreal Engine 5, that standard of what a remaster will look like moving forward is, it's so close to remake that I think it creates an unrealistic expectation for potentially other developers who might want to remaster their games in higher te texture quality, um, but maybe not touch the other elements where it's just that up res. It's the same thing that uh, the Oblivion designer says where he thinks it should be called Oblivion 2.0 because it is so far beyond just what a typical remaster is. It is, it's beyond. And so that's that's all I'm thinking is like, I, I think the designation of remaster, it's too simple when it's used on other games. And for Bethesda to come out and call this Oblivion remastered undersells what they did. I think that's that's my thought. But uh, hopefully that's the last time I talk about that. Um, um, maybe it won't be, I don't know. I feel like a curmudgeon every time I bring it up. And so maybe that's just who I am. And in my old age, I'm getting curmudgeonly. I'll see you back here on Tuesday for more of the hottest tech news. We do have that Mac OS video going live uh, this weekend. I don't think we have anything else prepped. Oh, actually, uh, we should be live streaming a world record extreme overclocking attempt with Doomed 83 being partnered with Adata on this, trying to set the memory frequency record on a stick of RAM. So we're going to be live streaming that on YouTube or Twitch in case you want to come check that out. It's going to be fun. We tried it yesterday. We did very well. Got up to, I think, sixth place with the, our, our attempts. And hopefully uh, today's attempts will bring us a little bit further. We'll have a, a full video recapping everything um, in the future. But yeah, that's happening. And I'll see you later. Bye.